What up, Note Campers? Hey, Scott here, ready to wrap it up. We have had a tremendous uh, three days. Saturday just seemed to fly by. I don't know about you guys, but uh, we are rock and roll. I am going to wrap this day up with some great stuff for you. Uh, excited on what we've got available here for you guys. But I really, first and foremost, uh, want to thank you for hanging around to the end here. Uh, definitely flew by. We've got some great stuff. I want you to hang around for a little bit longer. Trust me, I'll make it worth your time on some of the things that we'll share here with our fireside chat with you guys. But guys, it, uh, whenever we put these things together, I'm always amazed and always very humble. First and foremost, that you'd come spend three days with me and my friends. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We've got some pretty cool friends. I will tell you that when I look back at what has happened in the last 10 years, um, it's just been an amazing ride and it continues to get better. Don't get me wrong. We've had our ups and downs. We've had deals that have been great and then deals that kicked me square in the teeth and sometimes square in the balls as well, but that's okay. Um, we just get around those boulders. We keep moving forward and keep taking care of the things that we need to get done and just keep failing forward. I guess the word I like to say, um, you know, I, I like to kind of have that song playing cause I finally found something I'm good at. Uh, I think it's it's common for all of us. We're all looking for something that we can say, hey, we're good at, we can hang our hat on. Some of us are very blessed to have multiple things. Other of us, we're still looking, hey, what's what's going to fit into my wheelhouse? What's going to call me me? You know what I mean? What am I going to be able to plant my flag at and say, hey, this is what I am. What am I going to do? And, and first and foremost, I have to thank a lot of our vendors. Once again, they're phenomenal people. Uh, I've seen some of the offers that have gone out today. Like the last episode with Darren Adams and Infusionsoft just blew my mind. Um, really, our vendors really embrace the, of what we do and what we bring to the table because of you guys, because of what you guys, but because of the fact that you guys show up, you take action, and you're doing things, and our vendors know that, and we're glad to have you a part of it. But today's talk is all about what lies ahead for all of us, Okay. What lies ahead for all of us? What lies into that future ahead of us? What's going to happen in the next 12 or 24 months or 36 months? And I'm going to try to give you my best inferences. What, what's the best thing? Uh, and what are we going to see in the future? If you think about it, I we can learn a lot from our past. And, and one of my favorite shows growing up was the, the, you know, the series on NBC called Quantum Leap. With Scott Bakula, where he was a young man trying to go back and right the wrongs of yesterday. I don't remember exactly how it says. Trying to go back in time to change what would happen with people. I love that show. I love the fact that, you know, he, he would go in and he, he transported back in the future. And you never knew what would happen. Some days he would get transported back and be, you know, is it a, a lady or a, a 60s woman, you know, married there. You know, he had to try to go back in and adapt to the situation because you never know what he was was leaping into. And it always turned out when he was about to either get kissed or kiss the pretty girl, he got quantum leaped out to the next thing. All right. And it was always a great show of having to adapt to whatever market he was in or whatever situation he was in. All right. Absolutely loved the show. And I always loved his, uh, Al that would show up his guide, his mentor along the way and give him the spot, you know, pull out that funky looking phone and say, here's the possibilities. Here's what happened. And here's how we're trying to fix it. There's a 95% possibility. If you do this, she's going to be okay. Or he's going to be okay. It's going to fix it all. And he can leap on. And he was always looking for that last leap home. Right. Remember that? And he was, his body was in the in, in, in current day, but he was always going back. If we look back, we can learn a lot back about our future. We learn all about our future by looking back at what happened in our past. And the saying goes in this known history, and I pulled this up. You can see this. The bubble, you look back at what happened 10 years ago. And the bubble blew up four times higher than any previous bubble back in 2008. And a lot of stupid people doing some dumb things, okay? (laughs) Like this show too, Jane. Yeah, great one. You look at our bubbles. You look at the kicks up and how it went all the way up and everybody was still buying, Okay. And it comes like, oh, my God, something's going to happen. And it's the same. You start hearing the same messages, what's going on. You hear, like, from Dawn talking about, the note queen talking about, hey, there's things that are going to happen. Don't know exactly what it is, but it's going to happen. Kathy Fetke started off yesterday talking about how she's at the, a different conference, and these economists are talking about something happening. I've been the big believer that we're going to see something happen any day. 
It could be six months. It could be another year, maybe two years. I doubt it's going to be that long, but we're going to start seeing things. And I like to pull up these graphs because this talks about the housing bubble. Real house prices from the four basic, the one, two, three, four, CoreLogic, Case Shiller, National and Monthly, and then the reset. you start looking at this recession stuff here where the recessions are taking place in the blue lines. And you see here as of January of last year, okay, where it was. I don't, still couldn't find the numbers in the current drafts for where we are at the end of the year, but they're climbing up. They're getting back to where we were back to 2008, 2009. That's why we're seeing a little bit of a tightness on non-performing assets. That's why the markets, markets in, the, in states that we're not buying anything in because they just they don't make any sense. The prices have come back. That's okay. There are still plenty of markets out there, but this should be scaring the shit out of you. Okay? If you're not prepping, if you're not doing something to take advantage of what's going to happen, you're a dumb dumb. Okay? And I would hate for you guys to make the same mistakes that you made 10 years ago or to see and be involved with this. Because there's opportunity made in ups, there's made money in down markets. Okay? I made, I was down. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of people that recovered, that were in, kicked in the shins and the teeth and everything else. That big, badass bully took your lunch money, your shirt, and your shoes and left you there holding, your, holding yourself like, what the F am I going to do? I've been there. All right. I had a mortgage company. I got out of the mortgage company at the right time, but I was held, holding a lot of property. And I had to reinvest, recreate myself and refocus on things to take advantage of the market. Now, I didn't know. I didn't see things beforehand. And it wasn't as awful as I am now. But we, that's just 10 years ago. And there's all these signs that the stuff is going to happen again. So what lies in, in store for us? Well, we're going to have some more default of notes again. We're going to have more foreclosures again. Interest rates are going to go back up. They're creeping up again. We're going to see inflation. All right. But there's also other things that scare the crap out of me as well. All right. And what are those things? Well, <laughs> it's the other debt. It's the other type of paper out there. Okay. And I did a, uh, a webinar on Monday, a note night in America, the end of the year, I think December it was, about market plans. Okay. You look at auto loan debt, car loans, especially the used car market. It's at high default rates. They say that's going to be the next wave is your car loans, people foreclosing, you know, getting evicted or repoed. Student loan debt. Oh, my God. That's the higher education are, are not higher education anymore. You have people going to school, coming out with 60, 70, 100 grand in debt, and they're, for a job, it's $30,000. That pays them that on an annual basis. It just doesn't make sense. Just doesn't make sense of what you're seeing out there, okay? And then you look at credit card debt. Oh, my gosh. Credit card debt is a whole different mumbo-jumbo thing. And they say the actual average person has five grand in credit card debt. Our household is over 10. But I got a, a chart that should scare you a little bit. Here's the average cre credit card debt in America by the household net worth, okay? If you've got a negative or zero net worth, that means you owe more than you have coming in or in assets. Negative zero households, which is a large chunk, okay, has an average of $10,000 in credit card debt. That debt they're never pay off because they're not building any assets. And it goes up from there, $3,900 all the way up to roughly on average, the more you've made, the more net worth you have, the less you have as a percentage of credit card debt because you're doing the smart thing. I agree. But who is in the households? If you think about this. Who's in the household that we will see the most of? It's that sub fifty, sub hundred thousand dollar net worth. Now we have there's twenty four thousand. Sorry, for twenty. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Twenty four million households in America out there that have a net worth of over a hundred grand, and they have money sitting on the sideline. Their IRAs, four hundred one ks. They're looking to do something with. Okay, so you have an opportunity to either help those people. Okay, by potentially helping the people that are below them. Because we're going to see defaults. We're going to see mortgages. We're going to see people losing their houses. The 100% financing is back. It's not a question of when it was going to come back. It's been back. When you have new states and new programs being offered up to the people that can't afford it with 100% financing, oh, don't worry about it. We'll donate the 2.5%, 3.5%. It's freaking nuts. So you're going to see some opportunities I just hope that you're on the right side of the paper game instead of the wrong side of the paper game. 
All right. There are things that are happening out there right now that we're seeing. We're seeing numbers go up. And if nobody talks about this stuff, there is a fake news. I don't, I don't care who you vote for. CNN and Fox, neither one is accurate. Okay. Worst thing you can do is sit, spend time and sit and watch either one of those because it only gives extremes on one side. They never meet in the middle. Okay. I go to the gym here at my offices from 12 to 1 every day. And there's a guy that comes out, turns on CNN or turns on Fox. And I'm like, dude, no. No, don't you can have ESPN or something else, but do not have any news on. I'm here working out. I've been here for half an hour working out. You're not going to put that in and ruin my last half hour by listening to the talking heads. You have to take responsibility for what you want to accomplish. You have to take responsibility for where you want to be at in 10 years from now. Do you still want to be in the same spot? Are you still in one of these really negative areas? Or are you taking actions to get shit done? Okay. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, you've got a crystal ball. Whether you like it or not, we all have a crystal ball there. All you've got to do is look back at what happened 10 years ago and see the same numbers, the same dr- timelines are happening again. Wall Street is selling mortgage-backed securities again. They're starting to do those credit, sw- wait, the sc- credit swaps again. Okay? Go watch the big, the big short again. Go see Too Big to Fail. You are, we are in a worse position than we were years ago. The debt leverage out there, what used to be at 15, for every dollar, it was leveraged 15 to one at Citibank and, and Chase and things like that. Now it's at 45 to 52 cents, for, sorry, 50, 45 to 52 times you know, for every dollar. So it's three times worse than it used to be. There is going to be a major market correction and that those that are going to actually come out ahead are the people that understand the debt game. They understand the p- paper game. They understand the opportunity to market. And I'm saying, oh, you're going to m- make money off. No, you have an opportunity to help a lot of people and make money doing it. I love to be wrong. I love the fact that people, oh, we're going to help people and help people. That's great, but you're not going to help people. You can help people all day long, but you're in this business to make money. Okay? So the idea you're going to help everybody is bullshit. Okay? Total bullshit. Okay? My, my good buddy, Mark Gold, used to talk about, hey, we're going to modify a thousand homes out there, modify a thousand mortgages. I wish that was the case. Okay. I wish I could give a, a thousand loans modified in the next three years, in the next, or the past three years. That would be great. Not going to happen. Unfortunately, we have it, it live in such an uneducated society. People have their heads shoved so far up their ass that they're not making any changes to their spending habits. They're not making any changes. They're not setting things in place to make a different decision, they look back at what they did and they're doing the same thing. When I see, oh my God, Steph and I talk to investors all day long and a lot of people are like, well, does the note game replace my high-end fix and flip business? I'm like, well, it's not going to replace it. It's different. Well, can I make a million dollars a year? Well, are you making a million dollars a year? Well, no, I made it three years ago. Well, great. How many deals are you doing this last year? Well, I haven't really done anything. Why? Because the market's changed. Yeah, the market's changed, idiot. You have to change your philosophy to change your actions to take advantage of the opportunities or to avoid the potholes. If you see a big freaking boulder in the road, do you drive into it or do you slow down and work your way around? Unfortunately, most people financially, business-wise, drive smack dab into it. Oh, what the hell happened? Okay. And what lies ahead for us is opportunity, another shakeup. Okay, another shakeup that you've got to be prepared for. All right. And you have two decisions. You have two decisions that you have to make. Two decisions. Okay. Two very simple decisions to make. You can either do something, take action, and take your future, your future, your kids' future, your family's future in your hands and make a decision. Or you can sit there and do nothing procrastinate, wait for the perfect time to do something, you will never get the perfect time. If you choose not to do something, you are choosing for somebody else to make that decision for you. Because I guarantee you don't do something, somebody will make that decision for you. It's, it, it happens all the time. Oh, I'm fat. I need, to get in the, I need to get in the gym, but I'm not. You know what's going to happen? You'll have a heart attack and you have a doctor make that decision for you. You sit around, oh, I want to do that, but I, I'm still like my bowling league or I still like going out and drinking. If you keep doing that, you're never going to get out of the rut that you're in. You're never going to take an opportunity 
and start changing the things that you have to do. We had a great conversation with Rhonda Brayton yesterday. He did an amazing job talking about how we have to sometimes grow in that business. We have to get outside of that comfort zone to do bigger things. We have to get out of the risk zone a little bit. And we always think, oh, we're going to be in the dead zone. But no, that's never the case. You have to expand your comfort level. And the only way you do that is by taking action. The only way you do that is by changing the daily decisions you do on a daily basis, changing what you're doing on a regular basis. What does that mean? Well, some of you guys are brand new to this. You've got to start learning. You should start doing things differently, making different offers, reaching out to banks, sending an email out, marketing. It's the 21st freaking century, and I'll get that later on, okay? But many of you are going to continue just to have a sign like this and bang the hell out of your head. Boom, boom, boom. Why isn't things different, okay? And I'm going to laugh. Like, why am I not getting different uh, situations? Uh, My mailers worked three years ago. Well, they don't work the same. The world's changing. The world's evolving. I had, I'll give you an example. I had somebody send me an email uh, and he's like, oh, I, I want to write this piece and mail it all out to everybody. I'm like, no, do not do that. That's the worst decision you're going to make is why not? I says, well, because first of all, nobody's going to read it. We have an eight second attention span. So you either need to change it and either record a video and send that out or don't do anything at all. He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, you would hurt yourself more so by sending out that out. You have to change your marketing. And his coach wanted to argue with me and I laughed. I was like, go ahead. You're not doing it. Quit trying to do the same thing that worked two years, three years, four years ago. You have to adapt. You have to adjust what you're doing to make things work better for you. And it can often work better and smarter for you. Now, there's always going to be a little bit of a learning curve. But I would rather start learning now and have the learning curve go now while I have the opportunity versus it be a necessity. A learning curve when you have to make a decision gets harder. You become desperate. Okay. And people can smell that. Okay. I have people all the time, hey, I want to sign up for your class, but I got to make a paycheck in 30 days. I'm like, sorry, this is not the right class for you. You need to get a job. You need to pay your bills and evolve into this, okay? This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. I will tell you that right now, okay? You can make a lot of great money, make a lot of profitability, help a lot of people, not only your your people out there, your borrowers, your modifier, things like that, but you can help yourself. If you quit banging your head trying to force something in and go with where the market is, understand the things, If you're not getting the right type of bids, quit making offers from those hedge funds, okay? If you're not finding deals, quit waiting for deals to come to you and go out and start hunting on your own, okay? So there are things that we all need to do, first and foremost, especially if you're brand new. If you've been around for a while, your numbers are going to change things. The most important thing you can do is set realistic expectations. You're not going to go out and close 30 deals in your first 30 days. If you do, that's great, but 90% of you are never going to do that. Okay, success isn't going to happen overnight. We talk about this on a regular basis. You have to do things on a weekly, daily basis, not spending 40 hours a week. We're talking two hours a day, 10 hours a week. All right, if you're still working a full-time job that pays the bills, great. You have an opportunity there, but you've got to leverage your free time to take advantage of what's coming down the pipe. What happens if you get laid off tomorrow? What if it happens, things shake up and they start, people start cutting jobs. They cut your benefits. My high school teacher uh, is on Facebook and the teacher's pension program here in Texas just eliminated paying for all their medical bills. Now they're responsible for medical at their 60, 70, 80 years of age. So they were paying into for 10, 20 years. They didn't expect it to happen. Happened like that. What happens to them? Most of them aren't working. Most of them aren't doing anything. Most of them are not prepared. Because they sat around thinking somebody, the man was going to sit down and watch him. And I will tell you right now, the man is not going to watch out for you. Our politicians are not out for us. They are out for themselves and their war chest, period, point blank. I don't care what side of the politician side you fall upon, and nobody's going to save your ass. You are responsible for saving your own ass. And you have to start doing something now so that when you look back in a year or look back in two years, like, holy shit, I came a long way. I look back at the last 10 years of 15 years and I'm just blown away. I'm like, holy crap, things, some crazy stuff. Steph and I were talking the other night. The last five years, we have evolved dramatically in our business, right, Steph? Adapt. We have adapt and overcome. And I like to say, I think we're a little bit ahead of most educators out there because we do this note camp online. We've adapted, and people are now starting the purest form. Purest form. The purest form of flattery is when people start imitating what you do. 
And we've seen that. It's, it's, it's flattering. We laugh about that a little bit. We're like, okay, great. That's awesome. You know, we, well, that's a whole nother fireside chat. To words, to phrases. Yeah. Anyway, this is my fireside chat. Yours is wait for later. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what I'm trying to get at, you have to realize if you're going to make changes, start doing it now. And it's going to take some time. Give yourself six months, give yourself 12 months. All right. For those who are brand new, you're not going to be able to take everything in you learn here in four days and apply it all. The reason Gail's closed on 30 deals in 12 months because she started off with one and worked her way through. Same thing with Cody. Cody's still working full time. And those two guys are doing a tremendous job. Adam Adams has done a great job with the systems because it's taken time for him to hone it in the last two years. Okay. The reason Joel Markovitz became so great at special servicing is because he's been around the block for a while. The reason I've gotten to the point where I've closed 2,500 plus deals is because I've done it for 10 years. 2,500. It's over 2,500, actually. It's closer to three. We have closed a lot of deals. We've helped a lot of our investors close a lot of stuff because we did it a little at a time. A little bit of a time goes a long way to finding success, to finding the type of success you want to have in the future that you want to have. But you have to start doing something different today if you're not happy where you're at in your situation. You have to start taking actions differently. Start hanging with different people. Start surrounding yourself with a different type of friend, a different type of family. Okay? That's the way that you get better at. My, my buddy Greg Reed is the co-author, uh, co-author of Three Feet from, Think and Grow Rich, Three Feet from Gold. Co-author with Sharon Lecter. Always loves to say that his mentor, Charlie, Charlie Tremendous Jones, says you'll be the same person in five years as you are for now, except for the books that you read and the people that you meet. If you start thinking about the people that you meet and the people that you hang out with, we are all an average. Our income is always an average of the five people that we hang out with the most. If you're not where you're at, if you're at $30,000 a year, you probably need to start hanging out with 50,000 people, $50,000 a year people. If you're at 50, you probably need to start hanging out with $100,000 a year people. If you want to make a million, start hanging out with people that are pulling in seven figures. Because if you try to go hang out with million dollar people now and you're making 30, you are not going to be able to do that, make that jump. You have to take it step by step, climb that ladder to find success. And I love what Sharon has shared on Thursday. I love what Rhonda shared yesterday because the whole idea of this philosophy, of the underlying thread to this note camp, as many of you will know, it's the lantern. You've seen it. It's on the logo. We've changed it up a little bit different. It's a lantern to help you light your way down this path. And we've changed up the speakers this time around. We've brought in some new blood, not anything against the old blood. It's just different people to help you give a different life. Because every there's a different path along the way. My favorite quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson is, do not go where there is a path, but go there is no path and leave a trail. You don't have to go in and hack your way in the bushes, but there are plenty of people who will hack that trail for you or with you. People that are in the same situation, people here at Note Camp are looking to take their business to the next level. They're doing amazing things. We have people here who have closed on, haven't closed on their first asset, closed on hundreds of assets. That's what's so great is you can surround yourself with things. And the things that you need to do each day is you need to focus on deals, looking at notes, okay? You need to look at case studies or looking and making offers. Those are one of the biggest things you need to do. And second thing is marketing. You've got to market on a daily basis, some sort of fashion. I love what Christy shared yesterday. Christy watched the social about the 18-minute marketing plan. We've all got 18 minutes. Jesus, that's, that's 18 minutes is so much faster than 30 minutes in the gym. But my trainer, Thomas, likes to say five minutes is better than nothing. Ten minutes is better than nothing. Spending at least a little bit of time each day and posting something or sharing an article, doing something each day is better than what most people aren't doing or most what most people are doing and not doing anything at all. And the third thing that you've got to do is you've got to raise capital. You've got to talk to people. If you want to do big things and blow your numbers up, you've got to raise capital. No, investors aren't going to talk to you. And that's what I love what about Bob Zachmeyer said this afternoon is people aren't going to do anything with you until you've got a deal. That's why we put notes first versus going out and raising capital first. If you go out and find notes and good notes and good deals, it'll raise capital. 
You find deals, you market the deals, it'll find capital in that order. Not any other way, but marketing is important to keep in mind because if you really do want to find notes, you have to learn to market. And they go hand in hand, it should be A1 and A2, okay? So those are the three things that you have to do on a regular basis. Now, most of you are cavemen. Most of you are doing stuff like you did five years ago, 10 years ago. You are in the dark ages. Actually, the dark ages for most of you would be brighter than what you're doing right now. Many people, many of you guys aren't doing anything. And when I see the results on the poll and the survey, which only 145 of you had filled out as of a few minutes ago, it's bleak. You are trying to kill a dinosaur or a freaking woolly mammoth with a sharp spear. Yeah, you might get lucky every once in a while, but it's not going to be the continued type of success if you evolve. You have to evolve in the 21st century or beyond that. Because if you're using the tools that we talk about, using the infusion softs, the Mobits, the social media market, a lot of things to do, this gets a whole lot easier for you. Because if you think about the caveman back in the day, they looked at the moon and go, ooh, ooh, bright light, ooh, 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 okay? But we evolved over time to the point now, when you think of Star Trek, you think about us going to the stars, the moons. We've evolved. We've adapted tools. We've used technology to beam me up. And Scotty will beam me up. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. She's coming apart at the seams, Okay. I know you guys are capable of doing so much more than what you're doing now. And you've got that stretch. You've got to reach out and stretch a little bit. You are capable of applying new technologies. I like what Joe Tomko said on a post. He's like, man, a few weeks ago, I thought Facebook and Google, all that was a waste of time. And honestly, for a lot of people that use those tools to bitch and moan, to share political comments or to whine about themselves, they will never see any type of success. It is a waste of time with those people. But there are a lot of people out there, a lot of good people that aren't saying anything that you can still reach out to. You can still target. You can still reach out to those people and communicate and use the tools available so you are your own Captain Kirk on your own Starship Enterprise. You have the capabilities to go at the speed of light or faster. Warp speed your note business if you do the things that you need to do. But you know one thing that's really important? One thing is important is you're not going to be able to get where you want to be being a solo show or being a solopreneur. You have to surround yourself with good, like-minded people, people that want to help you, people that have their own little niche but can help you out, whether you've got a Spock on your side or you've got a Scotty to help you out with technology or you get a Bones to check you out. There's a whole lot of people out there in this small little niche community, men and women, that are here to help you. They'll help you to go where no man has gone before to help you close more deals and do amazing things that you would have never thought before looking back two years from now or three years from now or four years from now and, and looking back at your past. Holy shit, I've come a long way. What's in store for us? You hold what's in store for you in the palm of your hands. Whether you take action or you don't. I don't, I don't hold the key to success. None of the speakers here hold the key to your success. You hold your own key. You make the decisions on a daily basis. You are where you're at today because of the decisions that you have made. It's nobody else's fault. Nobody else held a gun to your head to get you to where you're at today. I don't care what Debbie Downer or what hole you've dug for yourself because we've all dug holes or we've all fallen into some. I don't care if you've been through a divorce or foreclosure, an eviction, sickness, you know, car repo. I don't care what you've been through. Welcome to the club. Success doesn't show up to people who aren't worthy of it. Success never finds the people who are scar free. You have to work and you have to overcome things. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to solve things. But I guarantee you, especially in the note business, there's nothing here that's going to kill you. There's no but monster under the bed waiting to grab you by the feet and drag you to hell. If you do the right things and surround yourself with the right people, the right network, the right crew, you can go to the stars. You might have to do sidetrack a little bit. It's not going to be a straight shot, but you can find the type of success that you want to find.
Do you implement the things that we talk about implementing? Will you talk and find out your niche? Maybe you don't need to drive the Starship Enterprise. Maybe you need to do another little ship. Okay, that's fine. Get your feet wet closing some deals. Because ultimately, ultimately, it is up to you. And life is not easy, I will tell you that. But life gets a whole lot easier if you're doing something. What's not easy is sitting around moping and falling into your own dark circle, your own black hole of despair. You have to fight your way out. I guarantee if you fight your way out at some point, you will find success because I guarantee I'm not the most guy with the biggest. I have the, I, I don't, I'm not religious guy, but I have faith because I know God isn't not, is not going to give me anything that I cannot handle. I guarantee it's the same thing for all of you. Sometimes you have to go through fire to be melded or molded into this steel sword that cuts through everything else. You've got to go through some trials and tribulations. If you're going through that, hang on, don't give up. Maybe you've got to take a step back from your dreams a little bit. Take a step back, work a job, pay some bills, get your ass underneath it again so you can go out and start doing some things. I've had to do that in my past. And yes, it sucks for a while, but you realize it's just a short-term blip on your road to success. We're all going to be in real estate for a long term, hopefully. The biggest thing that you have to realize is, though, if you're going to get someplace, you've got to be on one road. You can't take five roads or six roads to get where you want to be. So you have to pick out one thing and really one thing only to chase that squirrel. You can't do rent, fix and flips and rentals and notes and wholesaling and raising capital. You, you can try, but you'll never make the money until you focus on one thing and one thing only. Now, if you've got a successful business going and you've got general manager people to help you, that that's phenomenal. I'm not telling you you can't work something and work some part time. You can do what you want to do, but at some point, there's going to be a decision to make whether you've got to quit what you're doing, at, especially working your job, or start chasing, start taking, spending more time on what your passions are. And in the last two years, we have changed up our business a whole lot to figure out some different things. We've had our ups, we've had our downs, we've had deals go great and deals go south, but we keep plotting forward. And I guarantee I will always be crystal clear with you guys on what we're focused on. I'll always, I'm not here to blow smoke up your butt. Things are going to get good. There are also going to be some bad times along the way, but you have to realize what side of that path do you want to be? Because we're all in the paper game. You can either be on the good side where you're controlling it, or you can be on the bad side where you're responsible for it. And sometimes it's a bit of a transition period, okay? But if you surround yourself with good people, if you surround yourself with the right-minded vendors, the, the, the people, your educators, your mentors, you can go a long way towards getting close to that success. I'm so proud of our students that are closing deals. They're, they're making changes in their life. They're making changes not only in their life, but their family's life, their community's lives, doing big things. They're out speaking now, doing other things. I'm so proud of those types of people, those people, not those types, but those people are doing big things, okay? You have to realize that it didn't happen overnight for those people. It didn't happen in a year. It takes time. And you're going to learn. You're going to stub your toes, as I said before. But yet, if you surround yourself with good people and are willingness to learn and are coachable, you can go to the moon. You can be your own Captain Kirk or Spock, if you like the point of your guy first. Be your true star man and do amazing things. I, that's why I'm always a big believer in setting big goals. If we miss the big goal, hey, we shoot for the stars and we shoot for the moon and miss. We're still among the stars. And so we are in April. It's hard to believe it's April 7th already. The year is already 25% done. What are you going to do with the rest of 2018? How are you going to stay on track? How are you going to close deals or get close to your goals or start implementing your goals? Don't be the person that you sit a year from now or two years from now and you look down, you've never sent an email out. You've never called an asset manager. Or you keep asking, where do you find these people? It's a little tool called Google. If you start taking action, you will find success. You just have to keep taking action. And sometimes taking action is doing it more than 10 times. Sometimes you've got to make that 50th phone call. Sometimes you've got to call that bank 69 times. We told no until you get the 70th phone call right. Because this business is not the easiest, but it is one of the most rewarding businesses out there in the note business and it is also i honestly like to say it's the it's the place where deals still exist 
you're still looking for fix and flips and other things, you're having a hard time. If you're looking for REOs, you are smoking some wacky tobacco. You got to quit smoking. If you're looking for these high-end homes and things in Orange County or San Diego, sorry, it doesn't exist. You can keep looking for the pot of gold or you can literally go out and really find it yourself like Cody Cox liked to share with us earlier. So what are the things, one of the biggest things that we have done and look back at, I wanted to do this for for the last year. And it, it literally in the last 90 days, we really have sat about doing something kind of cool to help people out, to help them really build that crew. And I think the biggest thing six months ago is we started the WCN crew Facebook page, which is a great, phenomenal Facebook page. We'll be just south. Of, we're, I think we're just south of 700 members. It's a very active page. But one thing that we've instilled even better, I think, is since um, really March 1st as we started the WCN crew membership. And it's a, this is not something I'm not here going to sell coaching to you. It's not what I'm not here to do, guys. What I'm here to tell you is that we've got this phenomenal group thing that we're doing. And I want to invite all of you, if you're interested in being a part of it, to be part of the WCN membership. Okay. And what's involved with the WCN membership? Well, it's, we want you to join the club. It's a, a group of uh, investors that we want to help nurture. We want to help them take that extra step towards their note business. And no, it's not an expensive thing at all. All right. We look back at what, a, what two tickets to note camp and what a ticket to one of every one of our virtual workshops would cost. And it's well over, you know, a couple grand. We decided let's make something that makes sense for everybody. So we decided to create this membership, monthly membership, gives you some great stuff, monthly newsletter. You get a 24 hour access to tapes. You get bi-monthly training calls, webinars we do, special vendor discounts, discounted event tickets. You get to repeat our virtual workshops for free. You get a ticket to note camp. You get access to our Monday night replays, which are about to go away for everybody else. And then we, of course, we send monthly swag out and we do a lot, a, a lot of other things that we're adding to our membership here to do on a monthly basis. And uh, it's actually, that's not the correct website. The correct website is bit.ly slash WCN membership. Let me put that in the chat roll for you guys here. Um, that's actually not the right link there for you. Sorry. I was trying to put this together while Darren was speaking amongst everybody else today, but it's, Literally a very simple thing for $97 a month, which we, oh, sorry here, not the, let me go to all panelists and attendees, sorry. The link, basically we wanted to open this up for beta testing until we hit our first hundred members. Uh, and the beta price is at $97 a month for the first hundred people. And we're literally at, I uh, looked the other day, we're at 93 people are in our beta membership so far. We send out on a regular basis. I got to order a few more shirts for everybody this month, which is great. But once we hit that 100 member point, the price goes to 147 per month. And it'll stay that beta pricing as long as you stay in good context. We understand your credit cards will get changed, stuff like that. That's not a problem. But I'm saying as long as you're in good standing, you'll only pay $97 a month for a lot of great stuff. Our training call we had last month was worth the whole price of admission for most people for the year. And yes, if you get signed up, you'll get access to that training call. But guys, we I want to help people that want to be helped. And our time is valuable. Um, yes, we love our coaching students. We love our mastermind students. That's great. That's not what we're telling her. I'm not selling you my coaching program. What I am selling you is a little bit more access, a little bit more fun stuff and how to surround yourself with your own crew of people that are motivated to help, motivated to really help you succeed and help you take your business to the next level. And guys, we all hold our success in our own hands, as I said before. I love the fact that we, when we go places, we are always greeted by people that we have helped along the way. I'm always grateful, not only just our students, but our vendors and our extended note family. And I'm always amazed that when we have Rhonda and, and Sharon and, and other people join us in this, they're glad to be a part of it because we've helped out in a variety of ways and different things. We wanna help you. I wanna help you succeed. I want you to help you take your business to the next level. And so you can take advantage and be on the right side. If you do the things that you do, that we teach you to do, and you start taking action on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you'll find success. If you want to go out alone, be a lone wolf, you're more than welcome to do that. You probably wouldn't fit in anyway. But that's what I've got for our fireside chat. You can take advantage of what's going on in the market. You can see what's going on and see the history. Have your own quantum leap to look back and say, wait a second, that sounds all too familiar like something from 10 years ago. What happened 10 years ago? Hmm. What happened nine years ago? 
hmm, we're getting pretty close to the same thing. History does repeat itself. The question I have to ask you guys, are you going to be prepared when it does? Are you going to be around people who can help you out when you need that help, when you need somebody to pick up the phone and call them, hey, go check out this asset for me. Or, hey, I got a list of assets. You want to buy these deals together. That's what strength and unity, strength in a group does. It helps you take your business and do bigger things than anything else. The deal that uh, Adam talked about literally came from another member of our mastermind, another group. He raised most of his capital from the people that he was surrounded himself with. That's why he was able to raise $960,000 in four hours. You can do that same thing too. You can be like Adam. You can be like Mike. You can be like, you can be, I want to, I want to be like my hike. If you do the things and you put the work into practice and do it on a day in, day out basis. Okay. Guys and gals, that's all I've got for you guys tonight. Um, uh, Linda, thank you. Inspiring closing. Love the exciting new faces and perspectives. Thank you. Yeah. Glad you are here. Uh, Linda, we're glad to have you part of the WCN club. I can guarantee anybody that's on here is part of the WCN club. It loves it. Um, we got to get an, an email out this next week. I get our swag out this month, everybody. We got some really great stuff to go through. So um, thanks, Julianne Ferraro. Um, Blaine, definitely. You can go to the, the link we said in here. What is the virtual workshop? Well, vir- the virtual workshop we do is we do four times a year zip. It's a three day where it's me teaching on just non-performing notes, not 30 speakers. You got me like three speakers talking about that. And that's usually six ninety nine dollars uh, for you. So it saves you a lot of money because a lot of people usually take at least that twice. So, all right, guys, it is definitely worth it. Thank you, Stacy March. Appreciate it. Um, Gail, we look forward to seeing you kick crawl next week. Guys, please, please, please show up tomorrow. We still have another full day tomorrow with four amazing sessions. Okay. We got Mahir Allen in the morning. He's going to talk about 10 things he's learned as a note investor. We got JD Bates is coming from uh, Five Sigma. They're the creator of Note Pros, a great software package. That helps you pull due diligence in minutes. Really, really valuable, okay? Third thing we have, you've got our good buddy, Mark Uzuic, <clears throat> really, really kind of doing a, a keynote tomorrow afternoon uh, on how to really create and do a total transformation yourself to help you with success. And, and Mark's been helping entrepreneurs all across the world do some amazing things. So definitely join him there. And, of course, we'll give some announcements, talk a little bit about something else we're working on called the Note Boardroom. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all at the top, everybody. Have a great evening. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. So we got to wish Steph a uh, good luck. Steph has done a tremendous job being the master of ceremonies <laughs> for the last three days. Could not do it without her. Uh, Steph is actually going to be running in the, cap- well, jogging or walking fast in the Capital 10K tomorrow morning. So uh, I would be down there running with it if I wasn't here at Note Camp or walking with you, but She'll be there running tomorrow. So wish her good luck. You see her post photos tomorrow. So she's going to do a great job. Do a great job. So thanks, guys. Have a great uh, evening. And we'll see you all at Note Camp 4.0. I'm sorry, 5.0 on day 4.0. See you later. See you all at the top, everybody. Bye.